The only way to go for impossibilities to turn to possibilities is to believe. He that cometh to the Lord must believe that he is. And he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. To diligently seek means to be intentional about what you are doing. It's a diligent agenda. Without faith, it is impossible. So the only thing that is permitted to be impossible with God is something you are seeking without faith. Apart from that, every other thing must be possible. It is only when faith is absent that impossibility have a place with God. If thou can believe, all things are possible. The word that saves it is right here. Okay. Um, it says, so exactly what Moses saying. The word that saves is right here. As near as the tongue in your mouth. As close as the heart in your chest is the word of faith that welcomes God to go to work and set things right for us. This is the core of our preaching. He said, This is the word of faith. It is the word that welcomes God to go to work. And set things right for us. He said, that means he's trying to tell you this dimension of faith. That you literally welcome God and say, Lord, I can't do it all by myself. Can you come in and start working? Can you set things right for us? Paul said, this is the core of our preaching. All that we are trying to tell people is that you can't handle it. Let God step in. Welcome God. Welcome. Somebody say, I welcome you, Lord. I welcome you, Lord. I welcome you, Lord. I welcome you, Lord. So it's actually welcoming God in marriage, welcome him in yes. academics, yes. welcoming him that in that difficult situation. Yes. Yes. Welcoming God in the hospital. Yes. Welcome yes. God. Yes. 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 Welcome God. Yes. Verse 9. Say the welcoming word to God. And this is, this is how we welcome God into our lives. Say the welcoming word to God. Jesus is my master. He said the moment you say Jesus is my master, you have welcomed God. For God to begin to work. So you see, you don't need me to now tell you just how Jesus is my master. Jesus is my master. Jesus is my master. Do you know the word Lord means master, wow. owner. So when you say confess Jesus as Lord, you are only saying Jesus is my master. Oh, Jesus, Jesus is my master. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. So he said that this is how we welcome God to start working. Is to say Jesus. It's my master. Jesus is my master. Embracing body and soul. So the moment your mouth says Jesus is my master, your heart must be ready to embrace God's work. You must now start believing that God is about to work. Because Jesus is my master. God's work of doing in us what he did in raising Jesus from the dead. So the moment you say, Jesus is my master, you are welcoming God to begin to work and to work to the level and the power he expressed in raising Jesus from the dead. He said, that is the, that is the kind of work you are welcoming Jesus, welcoming God to come and start working. That means the moment you say, Jesus is my master, nothing is permitted to be dead in your life. You are welcoming the Father to come and begin the work, the work of resurrection around your life. What he did in raising Jesus from the dead, that's it. 
He said, you are not doing anything. You are simply calling out to God. Trusting him to do it for you. He said, that's the package of salvation. When you say, Jesus is my master. He said, from that day, you are not doing much. You are only simply calling out to God. Trusting him to do it for you. With your whole being, you embrace God. Setting things right. With your whole being. With your whole being. You embrace God. Now setting things right. So your spiritual life. Your emotional life. Your health. Your business. Your marriage. Your children. Your political appointment, yes, yes. your traveling, mm. you begin to embrace God with your whole being. The question is, do I know from the depth of my heart that God is here to work? Mm. Do I know? Mm. With your whole being, you embrace God, setting things right. Then you say it right out loud. God has set everything right between him and me. So when your heart believes it, your mouth must say it. God has set everything right. Today will go right. The month will go right. 2023 will go right. I am blessed already. He said your mouth must say it right. Then verse 11. Scripture reassures us. No one who trusts God like this, heart and soul, will ever regret it. I know that you are very casual with your Christian work. I can't blame you. But some of us, the word of God is life to us. What God says is actually a life. He says, Scripture reassures us. No one who trusts God like this. To shout, Jesus is my master, and then their heart hopes and look out for God to come and start working. And they will not do much, but they know God will come and set things right. He said, anybody who trusts God like this, Heart and soul will never regret it. So regret is not part of the faith life. Yes, 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 yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So the question is, what do I know and understand about my present situation. What do I know and understand? The Bible says that at this point, I should not lean on my own understanding. Now my understanding is that this disease kills, but Jesus said, don't lean on your own. My understanding is that this degree level can't get me this opportunity. But the word of God says, don't lean on your own understanding. Can you give us the uh, 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 amplified of Proverbs 35? Then we pray. Amplified. Lean on. Trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. So what insight do you have on cancer? God says don't lean on that insight. This is a whole job. But it is a good one. Yes, yes, 
Don't lean on your own understanding about your family background. Yes, yes, yes. Don't lean on your own understanding about the difficulties yes, yes. of the circumstances around your life. He said, Don't lean on your own. Oh, because he jammed that suffer. Who named the bit messy? So I said, Dear women, yes, he come and dear. Who named the bit messy? He said, My shrimp, my juma, the bit messy. That is your understanding. But you are committing an error leaning on your understanding. Yes, 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 yes. Say, man, to man, you will have a wound in the bit of my sea sofa. Say, man, to man, you drew a beer. Wound in the bit of my sea sofa. Say, man, to man, your boyfriend, you see, wound in the bit of my sea. Yes, it's a man, what is a sea? Mean to me, yes, man, you say, don't lean on your own understanding and insight. Lean on. And the Bible said that you will never regret it. Sometimes faith is a scary journey. It's a risky journey. Faith is a risk. But to lean on your own understanding is more risky. To lean on the understanding the doctor gave is more risky. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Everything happening in your life is a circumstance. It may be a scientific fact, but it is, is it a divine fact? That's the question. Is it a divine fact? Is it a biblical fact? It may be a societal fact. Truth is a divine fact. Don't lean on an earthly fact. Until you have known the divine facts ah. of life. Ah. Ah. Don't. For everything that is a fact in heaven mm. is called truth. Wow. My God. Anything that is a fact on earth that heaven doesn't see it mm. as a fact. It's not true. So the question is, what does heaven say about what I'm going through? That is the truth. Healing is a fact in heaven. Prosperity is a fact in heaven. Wisdom is a fact in heaven. Yes. Can you lean on the heavenly facts and turn a little away from the earthly fact? That's what I ask of you today. Most of you are fully dependent on what the earth is saying. I know that it can scare you. But God is also calling for another. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. Psalm 37 says, Trust in the Lord and He shall grant you all your desires. The secret for impossibilities becoming possible is the secret of trust and faith in the Lord. Don't give up. Yes, 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 Those of you who have already said in your heart, I've prayed enough. Maybe you were praying, but you were not really trusting. 
Today I came to you with the message yes, of trusting my God. My God. in the Lord. Trust is for you to jump from a 20-story building because God said so. Trust. When God said, I bore you on eagles' wings, it was a message he was giving us. Do you know how the eagle trains its babies to fly? An eagle will fly at the highest altitude and will push the baby out of the net. And the baby who has never, the eaglet who doesn't know how to fly, will be coming down in fear. Then when the eaglet is about to fall, then the mother eagle dies and come under the eaglet and the eaglet falls on it. Then it takes the eaglet back again, then leaves it. What he's doing is that he's building and training the eaglet to have faith that the wings at their back can work. And he will keep, the eagle will keep on doing that to the eaglet until at a point in time when the eaglet is descending, it will try to fly. Then it will try and try and try till it can now fly. But what the mother does is that it takes the eaglet to very dangerous terrains. That means the eaglet feels like he's about to die. That is when what is in the eaglet comes out. When God said, I will bore you on eagle's wings, that means I will take you through the path of trust. The path of trust is that you can get to a point when it looks like you are dead, then suddenly he will come under you and you fall on him. My God. Then when you fall on him and you think that, ah, I'm now good. I think I like you. Then he takes you back again. That is why the walk of faith is the walk of trials. Every faith must be approved by a test. The, the sign that God is building your faith is the presence of dangerous circumstances. The sign that heaven wants to build your trust and your faith in God is the presence of continuous dangerous circumstances that you have history of the fact that people didn't survive. But some way, somehow, every night you keep crying, the Lord, mercy. Then, some way, somehow, you survive it. Until, at a point in time, when he takes you to that terrain, this time, you don't only cry for mercy, but you begin to sing. I know my God, he never fails. Do you know that when he begins to build your trust, you believe in fear. And you survive in fear. Faith is not the absence of fear. No. No. Faith is trusting that God will be with you even though I'm afraid of what is happening. But he will keep on building you till at a point in time when that thing is coming, you don't, you no more fear. Because you have come to trust that he is there for you. I've got the Holy Spirit. Holy, 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 holy spirit. He is standing by.
I can surely never fear Cause I've got the Holy Spirit This is the song of those holy, holy, Who begin holy, to trust So they don't fear it when it's coming He is standing by my side I can surely never fear Cause I've, I've got, got the Holy Spirit. Holy, 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 holy Spirit. You know. Now the things that used to shake you, they are coming, and you want to face it. Yes. Because you have seen Him stand with you. Yes. Yes. At yes. different times. Yes. Yes. You have seen Him speak for you. When there was no voice to speak. Thank you, Jesus. You yes. saw him walk Thank you. Yes. for you. Thank you Jesus. When there was no strength to walk. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You saw him. Hmm. Open doors where there was even no doors. Hmm. Made him making way where there was no way. God does not only want you to have faith in him. He wants you to trust him. And the examination hall that graduates people into trust mm. is the hall of trials. Mm. And you begin to go through one or two stuff. And every time it looks like you're about to go down, then he comes under you and tells you that I've got you. Oh, thank you Jesus. I just want you to learn to bring what is in you out. But even if you are delaying in bringing it out, I've got you. Thank you, Jesus. That is where we see last minute breakthroughs, last minute liberations, last minute testimonies. Every one of us will one day go through the trials of life. But I came to tell you it's not for distraction, it's to build trust. David was not afraid of Goliath because he survived the lion and survived the bears. No. Joshua was not afraid to step into Jordan because he walked through the Red Sea. There are things that come after you is to build your trust. We are sure, sir, Cedra Meshach and Abednego. From that day, would they fear bonfire? Would they fear a stove? The book had needs a jump in your room. And you're kissing stove. I'm going by now. My God. My God. And yeah. So David will say, Do I have walked through the valley of the shadow of death? I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. If a sheep come to a point to begin to glorify rod and staff, that means that he has appreciated training and disciplines. Because the rod is to discipline the sheep. And he said that the rod is now my comfort. I have now understood all the pain and the trials I've gone through. They are now the point of my comfort. That if I have survived those things, I will survive in life. Trust. I trust you. Can you begin to say from the depth of your heart, Jesus, I trust you. I'll come out of this problem. I trust you. I'll come out of this situation. I trust you. I trust you. Lift up your voice and begin to declare, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. Lift up your voice, begin to pray. Lord, I trust you. 